In this video, we're gonna talk about the 10 AWS misconfiguration that attackers use to hack your AWS account. And we also tell you how to fix them. And towards the end, if you are an attacker watching this video, how you can use this step-by-step -step to potentially compromise an AWS account. So watch till the end for that. So let's start with the first AWS misconfiguration. Use of AWS root user, which is the God level access, Superman access, Wonder Woman access, whatever your favorite superhero access. That is like the kind of access that root user has and using that allows anyone on the AWS account to do whatever the hell they want. And to make it even worse, it doesn't get recorded anywhere as well. So a way to fix this is make sure you use a local AWS IAM users when you're trying to use AWS accounts. If you are an organization that has single sign-on capability or federated identity, definitely Google those words, definitely try and use single sign-on capability of AWS, which is used to be called AWS single sign-on, but now it's called AWS Identity Center. The other misconfiguration on AWS accounts is basically the use of storing long-lived credentials in your code or in your instances or basically everywhere you use your code. That is a bad practice because attackers are out on the internet looking for access to public repositories on your GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab or any other repository where your application code is stored and if it is public a lot of people are searching for what access keys. Yes the same IAM user if they've been given what access keys they can find and how far they can go with it. So if you find credentials for AWS in any of those repositories which are public you can probably use that to expand what you know about the AWS account and potentially create more users and do a lot more damage a way to fix this is to keep an eye on if you have an additional IAM users that you were not supposed to have if you have credentials that are long lived make sure you rotate them every 90 days that's the general recommendation if you can do it sooner or whatever the time period works for you definitely do that as well the other one being if there are credentials that are no longer in use delete them and probably for the most important one do not store credentials in your account create it anywhere do not screw it up jokes aside i just want to make sure you don't use long live credentials if possible use temporary credentials from aws that's probably the best way moving forward the next misinformation that i want to talk about for aws is the use of star permission in your iam users iam roles iam policies instance roles basically anywhere you can have an identity in aws if you try and have star permission that is again your superwoman batman wonder woman whatever you spared superhero permission being given to a user in your account and they can do a lot of damage even though I do that, that's my wink to the attackers who may be listening to this. And the way to fix this would be to make sure you are reviewing the credentials of users that are actively using your AWS account on a periodic basis. Some people do it every quarter, some people do it every six months, but have a practice of auditing all the users that you have there and making sure that they are only given permissions to things they need. If they need to change their access, is something going away from your existing permission? That's the way you need to go forward. The next misconfiguration I'll talk about is the use of unauthorized service in AWS account. Essentially, this is basically using services that that you should not have access to, but your legal team is not aware of it, your compliance team is not aware of it, because as an organization, you are legally obligated to be compliant to certain industry standards based on what the industry you are in. And AWS as a cloud service provider would have certain compliance standards, services, which you can use. However, they also have services that may not be compliant to that industry standard, like PCI or SOC 2 or whatever the industry requirement for you is. Use of some of those services which are not compliant is potentially something that can lead to a brand damage, potential fines being paid because of breaching industry contract for uh, standards or maybe even failing your audit so added expense for that as well a way to go around this would be to use aws organization and combine that with aws scp which is service central policies which you can use to control what services and what regions are accessible in an aws account for any user that is in that account the next misconfiguration that i'll talk about is lack of encryption in the storage essentially Encryption is a way of hiding information in plain sight in a way that no attacker who gets access to it is able to decrypt or understand what's written over here. Yes, you could be Sherlock Holmes or the smartest kid out there, but you cannot spell the key for this password. Trade big boobs with a Z. That's the password we're in. Yeah. No shit, Sherlock. So how do you fix this? You fix this by encrypting your data at rest, wherever it's being stored, and also in transit, wherever it's sent from one location to another. You can do this using services like AWS KMS or Key Management Service from AWS, where it allows you to even use your own key. Yes, you can use your own customer managed key, CMK, to make sure you're encrypting every data that's out there. The reason this is bad is because anyone can read, if something is in plain text, it's like reading a blog article. You know exactly what's written because it's in English or whatever you 
native languages. So you exactly what's written, either credit card numbers, personal information, whatever it is. So definitely make sure you close off this misconfiguration. Now the next misconfiguration is not enabling auditing and logging on your AWS account. AWS has a service called AWS CloudTrail. The reason I want to do it as an attacker is because it is recording everything that I'm doing over there. And if I want to have a clean slate after I leave, as an attacker, I would try and delete the AWS CloudTrail service or disable it the moment I get access to the AWS account. Well, the easy fix is make sure your AWS CloudTrail is enabled at an organization level and each, each account and also in all the regions that you have your CloudTrail supposed to be in. And also make sure you have integration with something called AWS CloudWatch or store these CloudTrail logs in a separate S3 bucket, maybe in a separate account somewhere. As an attacker who's taking over your AWS account, I may not even know where the CloudTrail is stored. Start again. The next misconfiguration is the use of allowing access from the internet for your instances using Security Group. Now, it could be your application hosted in your virtual machine that I spoke about earlier, or it could be any other service that is basically allowed access to the from the internet, which means attackers who are on the internet looking for any application on the internet, which is vulnerable. I'm available for you. Haha. -ha. That's what the attackers will be doing. And you are basically exposing your application for attack from the internet if you leave them accessible from the internet. The fix for this is basically make sure your security group in AWS allows access only from IP addresses or CIDR ranges which are acceptable from your organization. That's pretty much it. That, that's how you fix it. That's it? That's it. The next misconfiguration I'll talk about is having all your eggs in one basket, aka having all your AWS services in one AWS account. Now, AWS accounts are free, I know, but that doesn't mean you have to use one AWS account, you can use multiple. The reason you want to do this is because as an attacker, when I get access to an AWS account, I am basically trying to find where are the crown jewels. I'm going to try and enumerate as many services that are being used and what kind of permission that I have. Now, if all my production data or all my data is in one account, I potentially have access to all of it just by the nature of misconfigured I am. However, if it is separated between multiple AWS accounts, I have my prod in one account and I have my dev in one account because AWS accounts by themselves do not talk to each other unless they're configured to. And if they're separated, they are separate. They're completely isolated from each other. So the fix for this is security by design. Make sure if you're designing your application, design it in a way that if your application was compromised, it doesn't affect any other application in your organization. Also, it doesn't affect any other service in your AWS account and it reduces the blast radius completely. Boom, boom. Another misconfiguration is every application that you're hosting in your AWS account potentially uses the database of some sort. Now, chances are you're probably using something called AWS RDS, which is a relational database system, a managed database service from AWS. And the misconfiguration which you might find over here is again, no surprises, ha ha ha, that you might leave it open to the internet and may sometimes not even have credentials. Yes, you could not have credentials because the default credentials, you can just Google, what is the default credential for my AWS RDS SQL? And you get the answer for that. Oh my God. God, okay, it's happening. A, make sure it's not accessible to any IP address or CIDR range, which is not a known IP address CIDR range. Don't open to the internet, basically. And the second one, make sure there are credentials that are not the default credentials being used by your AWS RDS. And instance, do not do that. And that's why, because Hey, guess what? Your all your credit cards, personal information, everything important is data is being stored in the database. And if someone gets access to your backend, that's game over. <laughs> Now, the last misconfiguration that I'll talk about is the dangling DNS with S3 bucket. Essentially, all websites on the internet work on something called DNS or domain naming service. And AWS has a service for this called AWS Route 53. You are also allowed to link this to an S3 bucket. Essentially, have a website which is defined and hosted at AWS Route 53. Link it to an AWS S3 bucket. Because there's a connection between the two, you're basically building a website using the service. Now, for whatever reason, if you get rid of the S3 bucket and do not delete the Route 53, I, as an attacker, can create create an S3 bucket and link it to that website and I can start using it. Basically, I can do a takeover of your entire website. That is bad. As you can imagine, you don't want your website to be hosting mm, maybe non-sensitive information that you is not safe for office or even showing it to family. And the fix for this is you're making sure you're accounting for all DNSs that you're hosting in your AWS account. And if they are supposed to be linked to an S3 bucket, make sure the S3 bucket is still there and you own this. That's all the top 10 AWS misconfiguration that I want to talk about. Now, what I promised was if I was an attacker, how would I go about this? Ha ha ha. 
if I was an attacker, my first step would be, I would try and find GitHub credentials or some form of AWS credentials in all the common repositories that are on the internet on public. I would use uh, services like Shodan or more to identify if there are any public open S3 buckets. If you have those public access points or maybe even an application that is open, which is a URL that you have DNS domain for, and you realize it's hosted on an EC2 instance and open to the internet, that is also a good transfer enumerate. Nine or 10 times, once you get access to this, you're able to enumerate and find out more services. Hopefully you've done a good job of reducing the blast radius, but if you haven't, I would use that information to take over the entire AWS account and again, game over. That's all folks. <laughs> If you feel I have missed an important AWS misconfiguration, feel free to leave that as a comment below and I would love to answer any questions on cloud security as well that you may have, which you can leave as a comment as well. But we talk about cloud security all day, all week on Cloud Security Podcast, YouTube and LinkedIn and other Twitter social media pages. Definitely follow us more and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace.